What's up guys? Welcome back to Mad DIY. It's your boy Dave. Today we're going to show you how to set up your controllers on the RetroPie. So if you have a controller you want to set up, like normally I set up standard NES style controller, plays all of your games. You can do all of your games on there. Of course, not outside of PlayStation games. And I want to tell you something about PlayStation games on RetroPie. I'll do that on upcoming video to let you guys know how it's done, but why you should avoid it. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Buffalo Classic USB gamepad. Here you have it. Pretty cool. Looks just like the other ones in comparison. Let's, let's do a close-up comparison so my standard controller is is like this here's the uh, buffalo classic usb gamepad both have the directional pad the start select of course your xyb buttons your bumpers on the top there as well turbo and a clear option so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to get this guy configured on your retro pie so let's head over to it oh also on upcoming videos i'm going to show you how to hook up your nes 30 pro game controller and also wireless playstation 3 controllers so let's get this guy configured so what i'm going to do first is get this guy plugged in this one is already configured configured so I'm going to use that to navigate because once I plug this guy in it's not going to do anything it's not going to detect it doesn't know any settings I can just plug it in on any of the available USB ports as I'm navigating the menus nothing's happening pushing buttons on this controller it's not configured yet this one is so I can scroll through all the games consoles everything is working perfect there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll over to the RetroPie menu so many games on here there we go now if you don't have a controller already configured just power the unit on with that controller in place and it's going to say hey, I detect something's plugged in. Let's go ahead and get it configured. So you're going to be at the screen anyway. This is for those who already have one, but trying to add an additional. So on the controller that you already have configured, you're just going to hit the start button, hit start, and you're going to scroll down to configure input. Are you sure? You're gonna select yes. And then it's gonna say two gamepads detected. Of course, one is already configured. So on the new gamepad that you want to install, you're gonna hold the A button down. Okay, now the menu is pretty much self-explanatory. We're just gonna follow the instructions. So up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. Since this one doesn't have a left trigger to skip a menu option, simply hold down any button and it'll skip. So there's no right trigger either. Uh, we don't have an analog stick that we can push in. So we're gonna just hold down a button to skip. And same thing for the right. We're gonna just hold down a button. Now we're on the analogs. There is no analog. So we're gonna skip this as well. And right analog, we're gonna skip that one too. Skip, skip, skip. Now remember to skip, you just simply hold down any button and it'll use not defined and pass it up. So now we need to enable a hotkey. The reason why you wanna do a hotkey is you wanna be able to back out of a game without shutting down your system. And you wanna be able to save your game, so that's gonna be your hotkey option. And for the hotkey option, I just simply hit the uh, select button and press okay. Now after that, we're back at the main menu. So I should be able to use the controller now. Let's give it a shot. See, scrolling up and down, everything's working fine. Let's go ahead and back out. It's working great. So. Let's go ahead and uh, play a game, test everything out there. Something I want to point out on the controller. Once you configure this controller, I've heard a lot of folks say, hey, it doesn't do anything once I start playing or once I restart the system. If you have both controllers plugged in, if you have another similar style plugged in, whatever, whichever one you program first is going to override. So in this case, the Via Boot controller is going to override my Buffalo here. So I can still select options as you see. I'm going to go ahead and play Mario Brothers, but I'm going to go ahead and give you an example here. Now, don't worry about this. Any game that allows two players to play at the same time, both controllers are going to work at the same time. But if it's a two player game, the first controller in port one there is going to dominate. So in this case, even though I'm starting a game, I'm gonna select two players with this controller. Watch what happens. Nothing's happening. It's like, oh, it's not working. I just configured it. No, that's not the case. Here's your first player controller right here. So I'm gonna run or Mario's gonna get squished. Now watch as we go to Luigi, nothing's happening on controller one, 
but controller two is now functioning as needed. So that's just something else to take into consideration. Once you program another controller that's similar in style, but a different brand, it is not going to function identical to if I plugged in another viable controller, I could use either one to play the game. So it's going back to that retro feel on how it actually works once you have another controller plugged in. That's just a quick FYI guys. So there you have it. That's how you install the Buffalo Classic USB gamepad. Make sure you guys tune in. I got another video coming up for installing the wireless PlayStation 3 controllers on your RetroPie and also the wireless NES 30 Pro gamepad. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's your boy Dave, Matt DIY, signing out. Peace.